But I love being able to talk about the issue of, of life. And I just want you to say a little something with me here. Say, I am equal. Say, I am equal to you and look at somebody and say it. You know, it's crazy. It may seem a little silly, but there are 58 million. That video was awesome. Liberty. Powerful. There are 58 million who will never be able to say that because we have a country that has a history of inequality. But the great thing about the United States, which is, by the way, an exceptional country. Anybody agree with that? Yes. Every country has dealt with inequality inequality and the United States has an, an amazing way of allowing justice to finally rain down. But here we have a supremely wrong decision, Roe v. Wade, I would suggest that this would be a better description of the acronym, ruining our equality. You don't become more equal because you cause the death of another innocent human being. That's not equality. And so I wanted to introduce you in case you've never heard of this person, but some of you may have someone who's really impacted my life, the late Dr. Mildred Jefferson. She was an articulate champion for true equality, which is the right to life. Dr. Jefferson understood what inequality was. She grew up in the Jim Crow South. She grew up in, in Texas. She grew up in a time when racism was far worse, despite mainstream media's assertions, far worse than it is today. So she understood that, she understood sexism, but yet she rose above. It is unconscionably unfair that the victim selected on which to test the social remedy of expendable lives is the most defenseless member of the human family, the unborn child who cannot escape, cannot riot in the streets, and cannot vote. As a woman, I am ashamed that the voices raised loudest in this demand to destroy the unborn children are those of other women. That is one amazing woman. Dr. Jefferson and many like her have fought for true equality fought for people like me that were written off by the world that would be unwanted because of course anything that's unplanned is going to be unwanted and unloved which is a lie so she fought for individuals like those in my family this is my small little family we're going to kind of slip. yeah there we go a lot of afros going on in this picture yes sir I have six brothers six sisters ten of us were adopted see this is equality loving a child of a different race of a different ethnicity of a different ability simply because he or she deserves to be loved, period. We were adopted as newborns, adopted out of foster care, branded as unwanted, branded as hopeless, yet Henry and Andrea Bomberg out of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, defied the world's low expectations. How many of you know the world is constantly putting low expectations on you? And it's a beautiful thing to shatter them. And they shattered the, the myth of the unwanted child. They had three biological, I call them the three homemade first, and then they imported the rest of us, 10 of us. And you can see, the dip, you know, I mentioned that we were adopted as newborns and out of foster care, but some of us, you know, were white, black, Native American, Vietnamese, biracial, which I put race in quotes because we're all one human race, by the way, people. Race is just a human construct. But here, all these, these kiddos, let me show you a, a larger picture of what supposedly unwanted looks like. This is my entire family today. 62. No, we're not the Duggars. The Bombergers. These are just my brothers, my sisters, their spouses, their children, and my parents. They're actually, this is what love looks like. And this is what happens when you speak life. Because it takes one person then to have those reverberations for generations who chooses life. My mom was abandoned as a child. At the age of five, she was temporarily placed in a children's home. And that's when she made a promise to God that she would be a mom to those who didn't have one. You can see she kind of followed through right there. Obviously, my dad was on the same page because, you know, you've got to kind of have to be on the same page. You're going to adopt 10 children, just saying. And because of the courage of my birth mom, who I've never met yet. I believe that one day I will be able to. But because of the courage of my birth mom, I was able to grow up 
I was able to be adopted and loved and now be able to be an adoptive father myself. These are my kiddos, my four kids. I love them like crazy. My wife, Bethany, who's a co-founder of the Radiance Foundation. Two of my kiddos are adopted. All of them are loved like crazy. All of them are also homeschooled. Can I get an amen? And all that I've been able to be and all the lives that God has enabled me to touch only made possible because of a courageous decision of a woman who had been raped. On the 1% that's used to justify 100% of abortions. Every child, regardless of circumstances of conception, has value and worth that is not able to be determined by man, woman, or governmental institution. It's already been determined in a much higher place. Now, I'm just going to ask a little question. You, you, you know what this is, right? What is it? A beaver, yes. You're known as the beaver state, right? Beavers are incredible animals in the animal kingdom. And I didn't really realize this until recently because my daughter loves everything animals. Loves it. She just soaks it all in. This is incredible. First of all, beavers are only second to human beings in being able to change their environment. When beavers build a dam, they stop erosion. And what's amazing is they will work no matter the weather. They don't go hiding when it's cold outside. They work all year round and they keep building and keep building until they achieve their goal and they keep building and building again. And because of what they build, they create these wetlands that benefit so many other creatures, so many other lives benefit from the work of beavers. Whoever would have thought just thought they had big teeth, big orange teeth, which is because they have iron in their teeth. But anyway, amazing. And I think it's amazing that you're called the beaver state because quite honestly, I think pro-lifers are a lot like that. You keep working and working no matter the weather. You march when it's freezing cold outside or when it's raining outside. You engage in these difficult conversations because you will not give up. Amen? You can change your environment. Now, here's someone who obviously understood how to change an environment, Martin Luther King Jr. And you know, it is such an honor to actually be friends with his niece, Dr. Alveda King, who is an amazing, amazing individual, down to earth, passionately pro-life. Whoever would have thought the kid who was conceived in rape and the world said should have been aborted would be able to not only be friends with Alveda King, but create the content that you're seeing in fact, you can get a lot of our free content back in our table back there. But be able to create content that shatters the lies of the abortion industry. That's God. God allows triumph to rise from tragedy all the time. And here, I love we hear all this discussion in mainstream media about civil rights, civil rights, civil rights. The most fundamental civil right is life. Rights are useless without it. I don't want to hear anybody else talking about civil rights, especially the NAACP. By the way, they lost two years after trying to sue us for another civil right. They apparently forgot that free speech is a civil right. See, because I called them, did you mention it? I called them the National Association for the Abortion of Colored People because of their radical pro-abortion position. They didn't like it. They sued me. They lost two years later, which is just a testament to that when you choose not to be silent, when you choose not to cower in fear, you can prevail. So that, and I have to credit Alliance Defending Freedom for allowing that. Civil rights is predicated upon the belief that we are all created equal. Planned Parenthood is predicated upon the belief that, well, some of you are equal. It's interesting, if you look at the last three years of Planned Parenthood of Columbia Willamette, yes. These are the covers. Do you, do you notice a trend in, in who they're focusing on and targeting? Now, of course, they target all people, I'm, I'm not denying that. Abortion, no matter the race or ethnicity, is a tragedy. But they have a particular thing going on, not just here locally, but nationally. Planned Parenthood is trying to cast abortion as a civil right. I just have to get this out of the way. Planned Parenthood is not the savior of the black community. They're not the savior of women. They're not the savior of the poor. We already have a savior. And he came to give life, not to take it away. Amen to that. So when, so when our organization placed these billboards in the very conservative San Francisco Bay Area, are you familiar with that area? 
Yeah, 60 billboards, working with an awesome friend of mine, Walter Hoy in Oakland. We placed these billboards, and the NAACP called this billboard horrible and racist on the face of it, that it, quote, gave people the false impression that Planned Parenthood kills black babies. Okay, they kill black babies, white babies, and every hue in between babies. 323,999 according to the last annual report. We've been extolling the fact that Black Lives Matter long before the hashtag, and yet have been denounced by the very groups that should be protecting them. And as I mentioned, we, we were victorious in this lawsuit against the NAACP, but we need to have victories every day, whether it's in college campus, whether it's on college campus, whether it's in church, where maybe even in the workplace, we need to have these small victories. And they won't happen unless you are willing to engage in the really uncomfortable stuff, in those really uncomfortable conversations. Let me just show you this, because I, I just have to illuminate this. This drives me. You can't make this stuff up. This is a tweet from the president of Planned Parenthood who says, quote, everyone must own the responsibility we have as a nation to stand against the violence being done to black people in America. There are no words adequate to express the outrage and grief. Stop killing black people. Are you kidding me? She makes almost a, she makes almost a million dollars a year, Cecile Richards. And she has the audacity to say this. Planned Parenthood is the leading killer of unarmed black lives. Yeah, if you want to compare, because I'm all about numbers. Planned Parenthood kills an estimated 266 black lives every single day. Yet mainstream media and Black Lives Matter is always talking about the 258 that are killed in one year by police, whether justified or not. Regardless, every single life matters in and out of the womb. And you cannot ignore this that's going on. So we don't ignore it. In fact, I'm trying to imagine Martin Luther King Jr. back in 1963 when he gave the I Have a Dream speech. Could he have imagined that in New York City, more black babies would be aborted than born alive? For every 1,000 born alive, 1,101 are aborted. Every abortion is tragic, not just for the child who's killed, but the mother and father who are sold the lie that somehow death is a solution to the unplanned. I want to show you just a little video because mainstream media, uh, let me just, just buy a little poll. How many of you trust mainstream media by show of hands? Are there any delusional people in here? <laughs> mainstream media, if you haven't noticed, they, they lie to us once in a while. I mean, all the time. They never scrutinize Planned Parenthood. They get to say anything. So now, I love it. It's 2017 and hashtag defund Planned Parenthood. Woo, can I get an amen? They should be scared. It's about time we actually follow through. But I love this. This is just another example of how they have, they have a billion dollar budget and they can lie about anything. But this is called Pink Out. Uh, pink Out! Abortion, distortion. One in five women in this country depend on Planned Parenthood for health care. More than two and a half million people every so single year. Yes. They get away with the lies all the time. You know, abortion is only 3% of our services, which is a lie. But even if it weren't a lie, it'd be just like, you know, only 3% of the time we kill human beings. But look at all the other things we do. Well, look at them. Breast cancer exams, plummeted. The last five years, pap test, plummeted. Pre prenatal care, plummeted. In fact, PP of uh, Columbia Willamette doesn't even offer prenatal care. They refer out according to their own website. So this is Planned Parenthood. It, it, it's so bizarre to me, the whole 3% claim, which started back, by the way, back in 1995, a board member said, in a New York Times op-ed said, well, abortion's only 3% of our services. So we're supposed to believe 21 years later, abortion's still just 3% of Planned Parenthood services? Who believes that? Anybody? They get away with it because mainstream media won't scrutinize them. And it's so absurd too. It's like saying a, a car dealership, saying, you know what, hey, only 3% of our services are Teslas. But the rest of us, you know, we, we sell a lot of used cars and really cheap used cars. Now, I think it's the Teslas that's more important. 
Because with abortion, it brings in 80% of their health services revenue. So it doesn't matter what percent of your services, if it's bringing 80%. And here's the lie. They say, if you defund Planned Parenthood, we can't, women, women will have nowhere to go for, for health care. Nowhere to go. Even with her one in five lie, which is more like one in 40, completely untrue. Here's the beauty of the pro-life movement, working together. There's a great resource I want to encourage you to go, getyourcare.org. All you do is put in your zip code and you find all the taxpayer-funded, federally qualified health centers, community health centers that provide everything Planned Parenthood does and far, far more. Taxpayer-funded, they already exist, and there are over 13,000 of them. There are less than 760 Planned Parenthood abortion and abortion referral centers. Getyourcare.org. See, the lie is from them, hashtag, we won't go back. We don't need to go back. We can go forward. We can go forward in celebrating that every human life has value. The child, the mother, and the father. Amen? And going back to the whole equality of adoption, I love this. Norma McCorvey, who is Jane Roe and Roe v. Wade, some of you may not know this, she never actually had an abortion. She made a loving plan of adoption. Her daughter, never aborted, was adopted and loved. See, this is what we have. Uh, in a culture, 54 years ago, in a culture that was just riddled with racism, in a political landscape that looked impossible, King Jr. said these words. He said, I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. All men, all women, the unplanned, the planned, the able, the disabled, red, yellow, black, or white. You know, it's a miracle that I'm even standing here. And what you don't often realize is when you're afraid to engage in a conversation, it may have just taken three or four words for you to change someone's eternity for you to change the course of one woman's life and a child who would be able to touch generations? Will you be willing to engage in those conversations? Let me see a show of hands. Come on. Environments change all the time, people. They change all the time. Are you willing to change yours? God bless you. Thank you.